Hey guys, welcome to our CAD programming workshop and for today I'd like to touch a bit technical topic which is optimization of our algorithms and here I am equipped with Visual Studio 2019 I am on a Windows machine and I'm going to profile a bit an algorithm from Analysis Citus so I have this uh, project opened here in Visual Studio and the first thing uh, we need to do when we profile and for profiling I'm going to use uh, a tool which is named Intel VTune Profiler. The first thing we need to do, we need to switch our uh, configuration to release with debug info. So here it is. You see that when you configure your project with CMake you are going to have three configurations right out of the box. And uh, you see that there is one specific configuration which is named rel with deb info. It is essentially the same release configuration as this one. But it also adds the so-called PDB files uh, together with our dynamically linked libraries. And it essentially means that we are going to have our sources baked into these PDB files and we can use them for uh, visualization. We can, we can see not only that we have some hotspot, but we can also see right in the code where this uh, hotspot is located. So we switch to this uh, release with Debian 4 configuration and then we compile our project. This is the first thing to do. Once we are done with that, we can actually uh, run our application and I'm going to run it by just pressing F5 key on my keyboard just to be able to see the trace of uh, launching right here in the output window of Visual Studio. I want to double check that all my libraries, once they are loaded, they are loaded together with all these PDB files. You see that there is like this library loaded, for example. It's my DLL. And then right after this uh, output message, I see that uh, there is this small addition, like symbols are loaded. It means that I have my uh, PDB files right in place. And for example, this TK fillet library is coming from Open Cascade. And I think, yeah, you see that it says, Visual Studio says that module was built without symbols. It means essentially that I will be able to visualize my source code for, for my own application, but I will not be able to dig into Open Cascade. And if you want to profile Open Cascade as well, if you suspect that maybe your hotspot comes from Open Cascade kernel or from any other third party you link against, then you might want to build this third party also in this rel with deb info mode and this way you will also get these pdb files in there so for me it's not that important because i'm pretty sure that the hotspot i'm going to analyze coming is coming from my my application so once i'm i'm sure once i double check this thing i can close my application or stop debugging and the next time i'm going to run it without debugger attached so i'm going to press like ctrl plus f5 and here we go we have this we have this application now because this application does uh, you know hell of things i want to profile and i want to profile only one um, command here only one algorithm what I have to do, I have to be prepared for profiling. And that's why I'm not going to start profiling immediately. But instead, let me just open uh, this uh, VTune profiler. And here in the welcome screen, the first thing I do, I click this configure analysis button. And I'm going to stick to this hotspot analysis. And you can see that there are some other uh, types of analysis available. But hotspot is a basic one because it allows me to find my my hotspots and then here in the target uh, like what I'm going to profile I choose to attach to a process so here I can specify the process name which is in my case rcxe.exe this is this process and if uh, you know if uh, uh, Vtune profiler was not able to find it you can uh, hit this retry uh, button in there or if it still doesn't work for whatever reason, you can always go to your task manager, find your process by its name here and grab its process ID, which is uh, this thing here. It's 143.0.0. So I can specify this process ID and it seems I'm good to go right now. And now I can hit uh, one of these two buttons. If I hit this button, then the hotspot analysis will, uh, will be launched immediately. 
but that's not what I, I want to have because I want to get prepared. Uh, I want to get prepared to this analysis and that's why I hit this button. It's start post. So essentially what's going to happen, a victim profiler starts and it's uh, right now it's in a sort of an idle state. So it's not collecting any hotspots right away. Instead of it, it's just waiting for me to hit this play button over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back to my application and uh, do all necessary preparations. So there we go. And uh, to run this command, I have to type something like recognize how. And then there is a bunch of uh, arguments which I want to pass, but let me keep it as is right now. And you see what's going to happen. Uh, actually, the purpose of this, uh, the purpose of this function here, it's related to feature recognition which is a subject on itself. We are going to speak about feature recognition in one of the future series. But the idea here is that I want to know which faces of my cat part lie on the convex hull of my part. So I can also go and draw this convex hull like this. It draws a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff actually. And uh, one thing which uh, is pretty interesting uh, right now is this hull itself, like we have this hull which is a convex hull of our object, of our cat part. You see this is a cat part and this is a, its a convex hull. And now I need to know which faces belong to this convex hull and for that what's going to happen, what I'm doing, I'm kind of sampling each face of the part and uh, it gives me like series of, uh, you know, of points, like all these points and then we can, what we can do, we can project each point onto the convex hull and then we can see if uh, the distance uh, from each point to the convex hull is small enough, like it's uh, within uh, some tolerance value, then this uh, point belongs to our uh, convex hull and uh, if all the points or sufficient number of points for each face uh, belongs to this convex hull, then we can conclude that the whole face is aligned on the convex hull. So this is a principle of this computation. Uh, we can do uh, several settings. We can configure this analysis a bit. We can specify how many points we want to test. Like I can use 100 of points to make this sampling more dense. This yellow thing here is a bounding volume hierarchy or BVH data structure, which we use to uh, accelerate uh, this projection of a point to meshes, it's pretty basic technique in computer graphics and I think uh, so sometime in the future we also we will also touch this topic as well, but for now let's let's forget about it and just focus on profiling. Let me first clean up my scene and I'm going to disable all unnecessary uh, drawings. And you see if I run it like this, it's going to take like almost, you know, one and a half second, which is kind of good, you know, but it's not perfect. And I want to be sure what is the best result which I could get out of this algorithm because it's not really nicely scaled. And if I keep like 10 points here, you see it's uh, this amount of time. But if I specify something like 100, it's going to be much, much slower. And uh, okay, so what we can do about this, we are kind of prepared to run our profiling and for that I switch back to my VTune profiler and I hit this play button over here. So now uh, VTune profiler switches from its idle mode to listening mode, so it, it samples my application and accumulates data on uh, the functions which are being executed and now I can switch back here, maybe I can, you know, pass lot more points, which I mean, doesn't really make sense, but it would allow me to test uh, sort of a sort of a rainy day scenario here. So let me run it like this. And then I'm going to just wait uh, until this uh, command finishes its execution. And once it is done, I'm going to stop this profiling here. Actually, I can already stop it right now because I think that uh, the sufficient amount of data is already collected, but we can also wait until it's until it's done. Yeah, so it's done. It took almost, you know, 30 seconds, which is just awful result for this sort of an algorithm. So let's uh, hit this uh, stop button over here. And now profiler is going to finalize my results. You see that there is a log here saying that a profiler was not able to collect some debugging symbols for, for different um, libraries. Uh, 
which my project is link against but it's uh, not it's not that important because you see what all these libraries were coming from system some other libraries may also come i don't know from from qt which is also not important and uh, i can now switch to summary and already here i can see what are the uh, main hotspots of my application so one of the hotspots is this csleep class 2d it comes from open cascade and we can see it from the module name here it's tkmf and another thing is this bvh algo project point triangle so it, it seems that i've got a hotspot in my algorithm which is related to projection so we can now go to top down tree and here we see all the execution tree of uh, our program and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to just you know expand this whole tree until i reach my function you see what i'm here right now i have this engine recognize hull which is a tcl function like a C, C++ version of my TCL function and then we have like these two hotspots one is coming from uh, this sample phase algorithm and if I expand on here I see what the whole time is spent on classification it's basically this classifier algorithm of open cascade which contributes a lot to to my uh, to my computation and then I have this another hotspot like I spent 36% of my time just trying to project a point on the mesh. And you see that uh, here I have like a couple of functions that kind of compute projection of my point onto a triangle. So once you are here, you at least know what are your hotspots. And then uh, the question is if you can do anything about it. And also another trick which you might want to use just to make this whole picture a bit more clear. You can also go, if you are going to profile this thing, for example, you can select it here and filter in by selection using the context menu. And this a function, it will narrow down your results to, to this specific function. So you see that this project point triangle is kind of a heavy thing. And if I double click here, I can see, okay, the real problem of this code is maybe that its uh, call count is very high. It means that this uh, code is executed so many times when even if uh, its single invocation doesn't contribute a lot, when you execute it thousands of times, it's going to, you know, slow down the whole algorithm quite, quite a bit. And this is what's happening here. So maybe one optimization technique would be just to find a better solution, to find a better algorithm to project a point onto a segment of a line. So you see it's a project point segment here, a method uh, which, is, which is to blame. So this is uh, basically how things work. You now know the hotspots. And one last thing I want to show you here is how to output uh, this timing information because it's also, you know, pretty basic way of uh, profiling. And if you just measure your wall time, what is called wall execution time, like you have your wall clocks and you just measure uh, the time of execution for your algorithm using uh, these wall clocks. It also gives you a nice idea how slow, how fast your algorithm is. And for that, Speaking about Open Casket, what is a tool which you might want to use? If I switch back to my command here, this is an implementation of my TCL command. You can see that I have several instructions starting from timer thingy. It's timer new, timer go, timer finish, and timer see out. So these are just convenience macro. And if I go there into the definitions of those macro, I can see what, what's really happening here. We allocate a stack instance of this OSD timer, which is operating system dependent timer and then in timer go we call the start method and then we finish we stop it uh, we stop it and then we show uh, we grab the outputs from this timer in seconds minutes and hours and also we can uh, grab the CPU time which is uh, also a good indicator how much of a useful job a CPU was was computing and finally we can print our we can print our timing uh, using this conventional you know c out or whatever logger which you might have in your project so this is it i would say that profiling is a pretty important part of our daily programming job especially if you are programming in c++ it's a bit of a shame when you are not able to you know to to develop efficient algorithms because uh, c++ is all about efficiency after all and if you fail to uh, to end up with an efficient c++ code when 
uh, maybe maybe you should learn a bit more about you know the language and about the third parties which you are using and about finally about the algorithms which you are which you employ into your computation uh, so for example uh, here from this top-down tree what is pretty obvious already now if you leave if you leave this BVH business aside and switch back to switch back to our original uh, timing in here like I reset this filter I can also see what a terrible amount of time was really spent on this classification this classification which is coming from from open cascade it's uh, this uh, int tools f class 2d perform and this is a classification algorithm which you know what it does if I if I take this phase from here and if I look into its parametric domain what's really happening here I can show you there is this uh, build phase grid uh, functionality we sample this phase using a uniform distribution of points with the aim to produce to to have this uniform grid and for each point for each corner of each cell here what we do we take this point which is a two-dimensional point in the UV space and we perform a point membership classification for this point like we check if this point lies inside or outside our parametric domain and this is done using this tool of open cascade which is a in tools f class 2d so this tool is quite costly as you can see from here from this uh, trace of execution maybe one optimization technique would be to switch from this exact classification algorithm to something more efficient like why not to use some discrete uh, version of such an algorithm and instead of you know because you can also see from here that uh, uh, down the road what's going to be called is this CS leap class 2d and this CS leap is something related to curves and surfaces so I would expect that maybe for this classification open cascade kind of evaluates parameter curves and this is a costly operation unto itself so maybe it's not the best choice for classification especially if you're not concerned that much with accuracy of the result you just need you know to randomly sample a bunch of points and uh, you need to be sure that these points lie in the interior of your surface so this is it uh, this Intel VTune profiler is a free tool you do not have to pay anything for it you can just go to the Intel's uh, website here and download this tool for for your operating system it can be also Mac OS or Linux and once you have it installed it can also be integrated into your Visual Studio or you can use it as a standalone application uh, just like me because I prefer using it as a standalone application in order to have only you know a relevant uh, UI in there so that's it I hope it uh, was useful and Make sure to write efficient C++ code.